As a nurse practitioner, we're really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Those that have practiced for a long time know what I'm talking about. But we're not part of the nursing camp. We're not part of the physician camp. We're somewhere in this nebulous in-between area uh, that no one can really describe. No one really wants to own you unless they need you, in which case uh, you'll either gravitate towards the physician side of things or the nursing side of things. A lot of that depends upon where you work. But there is more and more uh, chatter uh, online about uh, NP education and the fact that NP education has become soft over the years. And I agree. I think any of us that have practiced more than five or 10 years can say pretty easily that nurse practitioner education is not as rigorous as it was uh, if you go back 10 or more years ago. And why is that? And I think there's multiple reasons for it, and I'm just going to, off the top of my head, talk about a few of them right now. The first one is the faculty and the quality of the faculty, and let's be honest, and I, I don't want to offend anyone who's currently teaching because there are no doubt some good, really good faculty people out there. But I think if they were honest, they would probably say that they're outnumbered by the number of faculty that are lacking in experience primarily. Uh, the times that I have taught uh, as adjunct on faculty, I've almost had the feeling that I'm, um, I, I don't know, though, others are wary of me because of the experience. It's like they appreciate it. They appreciate somebody coming on doing adjunct who has practiced for 20 or 25 years, but they also don't want to be shown up or exposed for what they don't know. And so they they definitely keep you at an arm's length. And that's how I've felt as an adjunct. Now, for me, that's been fine because they've always left me alone. And, you know, it's just myself and the students. And, and it's been okay. So I've never had any really bad experiences doing adjunct. And fortunately, I've never been forced to sit in the faculty meetings, with the exception of, I think, one uh, one school that I taught at wanted adjuncts to sit in on faculty meetings, and I always had to work those days. So I made sure I never did that. Anyway, I think that that's one of the reasons is that the quality of the faculty and what the faculty is expecting of the students uh, has softened over the years. It's not as rigorous as it once was. I'm going to give you another thing that I think is going on, and that's the fact that our preceptor situation, which has always been bad, I think is worse now. Uh, when I became a nurse practitioner, or when I was going back through school, it was in the uh, mid-1990s, and we were required to find a master's prepared nurse practitioner to do our preceptorships with. They wouldn't allow us to do preceptorships with PAs. And they frowned upon us doing preceptorships with physicians, believe it or not. And this was Syracuse University back in the day. And Syracuse University's program no longer exists. But the fact of the matter was, is that locally, there were so few master's prepared nurse practitioners back in the mid-90s that you really couldn't find many. So you had to beg and plead with the faculty and the dean to allow you the opportunity to precept with a physician. And it was almost always granted because I think everyone knew that, you know, there were very few master's prepared NPs out there. There were a lot of non-master's prepared NPs because at that time there were still diploma programs around that were graduating nurse practitioners uh, after programs that would last anywhere from like nine months to 18 months. And they were very rigorous programs. They were excellent programs. Uh, but they were the first to be disregarded by organized nursing because they weren't granting degrees and probably as a result weren't paying homage to the, uh, the local universities. But I think that the whole preceptorship thing has become more obvious to more people now that it is a big problem. There were always good preceptors out there and students were usually told who those people were and if you could get in and precept with those people you would probably have a good experience. There were also preceptors that uh, were, were tough 
and they were tough on the students, and the students would learn about those and would avoid those, those preceptors. And I said way back in the day, I said, you know, schools should be assigning students to preceptors that the school has approved of and that the school maybe uh, gives a stipend to. And in return, the school has some sort of quality control. But that's never been the case, and it's never changed. And now that you have, I mean, a huge flood of nurse practitioners out there compared to how it was 20, 25 years ago, a lot of those nurse practitioners are realizing they don't want to precept students, either because they're finding that the students are arriving even less prepared than they were back in the day, but also a lot of nurse practitioners that are working today are working on uh, a productivity scale and they have to see patients and they have to keep things moving and taking a student uh, slows you down and so it slows down your RVUs and it takes money out of your pocket and I had a, a, a physician who was actually a, a, a chair in my department who really just said something to me once that was so simple and so obvious but he said you should never give that away for free. You should never give education away for free. And, and what he meant by that was that physician education is not given away for free. Uh, you, you know, we have faculty that are paid a faculty salary to teach the residents. And yet, us as nurse practitioners, we're volunteering our time to, in a lot of cases, teach nurse practitioner students things that they probably should already know, like how to do a basic review of systems, uh, how to do a basic physical exam, uh, how to look in somebody's ear and identify the eardrum, <laughs> you know, I mean, basic things like that. So I, I don't want to generalize too much because, listen, there are some Good preceptors, there's some good programs, and there's some excellent nurse practitioners that are graduating. But I think anyone who's honest would say that the quality has slipped, and it seems as though, at least in my area, with the number of urgent cares that have popped up, that's where all of these new grads go, is to these urgent care centers. And it's, it's unfair to the nurse practitioner, and it's definitely unfair to the, to the patient, because neither one are prepared. Patient is not prepared to be seen by someone who really has zero experience. And the nurse practitioner certainly is unprepared to see the, uh, the, the multitude of, of things that can walk in through the doors of an urgent care. So I, I like to see that there is a movement towards uh, improvement. The problem is, is that most of us that are working for a living are also not involved with organized nursing like the uh, American Association of Colleges of Nursing and all the other organizations that are out there. Uh, you know, we're working. We don't have time to sit on those boards. And even if we did, we would probably be looked upon as a threat. You know, we're just a threat uh, to their power and their authority. But maybe if enough of us start to really say, okay, there needs to be some significant change to curriculum, uh, maybe something will happen. Thanks for listening, and I'll probably have some more gripes coming up here soon. So I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.